Good morning. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me along today. So I want to go through uh, my role as a civil aviation security inspector with you all um, and also go through uh, what the CAA, who the CAA are, what we do. Um, I apologize if you've already come along to a CAA talk and uh, you may already know this information, but for those of you that haven't, I've got a quick video coming up, uh, just three minute long, that just gives a brief example of who we are and what we get up to. I then go into a bit more details as to my role within the department I work in, which is a security department. So I'll cover what we do um, and what we look at. And I've got a quick challenge for you all, actually. Um, I'm going to challenge you to be an airport security X-ray operator. So I've got some images. So I want you to have a look at these images and see what you can spot and see if you could do the job of an aviation security um, X-ray operator. I'll then go through the future of aviation, where aviation is going. And actually, this is where we need your support in coming into the aviation sector. This is where we need your knowledge and your experience and your new ideas. Um, we're looking to evolve, to develop, and uh, I'll go through some of the ideas there. And then I'll finish by talking about how you can actually get into the role of um, the C within the CAA or within the aviation sector and how I did it and whether I've got any um, advice uh, for you all. So who are the CAA and what do we do? Well, I've got a quick video for you, so I'm going to play that. It's just a couple of minutes long and then I'll go through some more details. Hopefully you can all hear this. Um, please do shout out if sound isn't working. It's holiday time. Don't forget the sunscreen and your passport. While you're getting ready for your week in the sun, there's lots going on behind the scenes to keep you safe and secure, both at the airport and once you're in the air. A lot of that work is done by the Civil Aviation Authority, or CAA for short. The CAA is a regulator, which means it's their job to oversee the aviation industry in the UK. They help to ensure we're looked after when we fly and even when we're down on the ground. Even before you get to the airport, They've made sure the plane you'll be flying in is safe, is maintained, and was built properly in the first place. They make sure passenger aeroplane pilots are fit and well enough to fly and check the pilot's training, licenses, and that they are competent to fly. They also work hard to make flying as environmentally friendly as possible. The CAA looks after you before you get on the plane too, as they regulate airside operations. That's people like airport security, the people who check your tickets, people who load your luggage onto the plane, the people who make sure it has enough fuel to get to where you're going, and aircraft dispatchers who direct the plane on the ground. They even oversee the airport fire and rescue teams and air traffic controllers who tell pilots where to go and when they can take off and land. They are also responsible for airport perimeter security to protect against airport threats. Once you're on board, cabin crew are there to look after you and help to keep you safe while you fly. Yep, you've guessed it. They are regulated by the CAA too. Of course, it's always nice to come home from holiday, but imagine if you couldn't because the airline you're booked on has gone bust. This means that the planes can no longer fly, but don't worry because the Atoll Protection Scheme from the CAA will help get you home safely. The scheme also protects people from losing money should things go wrong with their holiday. The CAA also makes sure that everything that flies, including drones, helicopters, gliders, hot air balloons, light aircraft, parachutists, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, and even model planes all use the sky safely and follow important rules and regulations. The CAA regulates the airspace used by military aircraft too. One day, even commercial flights into space will be overseen by the CAA. Imagine being a space engineer and building rockets and satellites. What an amazing job. Now it's pizza time, all thanks to satellite guided drone delivery. If you work hard at your STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering and maths, you could have a brilliant job working in aviation and aerospace. You might be up in the air flying aeroplanes or down on the ground building and maintaining them. You could be keeping people safe at airports or designing rockets. 
You could even be working to reduce aviation's impact on the environment, developing new ways of powering aircraft or minimising noise pollution. There are so many rewarding and fantastic careers! To find out more about jobs in aviation and how we can help, check out the CAA STEM page. Excellent, so that's a quick video about the Civil Aviation Authority and as you can see it's incredibly diverse. We cover so much of the aviation sector. Um, I think as a regulator, a regulator you may well be aware of is Ofsted. Um, so we're kind of similar to the aviation sector. I'd like to say we're nicer than Ofsted. Um, but uh, yeah, we oversee and make sure that the aviation sector remains safe and secure. We have a huge remit and this means that the CAA is an incredibly diverse organisation, um, which is great. We've got a huge range of roles and an incredibly um, strong workforce that go out. Um, we have engineers, we have lawyers, we have inspectors, we have admin staff. It's incredible on um, what we cover. And something actually you may have picked up in there is our atoll scheme. So a few years ago, I don't know if you remember Thomas Cook um, went under, which was a real difficult time for a lot of people who are out on holiday. Now, the Civil Aviation Authority running the Atoll Scheme had to set up the UK's third largest air carrier in a matter of days. We had two A380s, which are the really big aircraft, the ones where you've got two um, decks all the way across. So we had two of those flying around. We had a large number of A320s, like the EasyJet aircraft and some Boeings as well, flying around, picking people up. And it's an incredibly busy time for us. And then we all pulled together as one organisation and work to make sure we could get everybody back. So that's kind of an example of one thing that we do, but I work within the aviation security sector. And actually this is something that I love. I really enjoy. It's so interesting on um, what we get to see. And I hope now I can cover um, a, bit of, a bit of that. I did do a quick Google search before doing this just to find some interesting facts and things. And 95% of the world's population has never been on a flight. So if you have been on a flight, you can count yourself lucky. Actually, there's very few people around the world that have been on an aeroplane. And apparently 80% of the world's population is afraid of flying. Um, so it's so-called aerophobia. Um, so again, don't, don't worry if you're afraid of flying. What I can do is reassure you, especially from a security perspective, aviation is the safest form of transport out there. It's safer than fly, it's safer than driving, um, it's safer than going on a bus, on a train, it's safer than walking. So it's one that it is the safest form of transport out there. When I was doing the search on facts, one really interesting one that just popped out is Rolls-Royce and other engine manufacturers um, want to stimulate bird strikes because that is a risk um, to the aviation sector. It's more a health um, and safety risk to the aviation sector. But what they do is they actually fire dead chickens into their engines um, just to see what happens. So I thought that was quite an interesting fact that I found. But what do we get up to um, within the aviation security sector? So we are responsible for undertaking compliance monitoring. Um, so we go out and we look at screening sites. So when you go to an airport, um, you will go through um, a large number of security checks um, getting through and we do that across the UK. Now on the left hand side you can see um, all the sites uh, within the UK, all the airport sites within the UK that we visit. So there's 52 directed airports in the UK, that's not including private airfields um, and small general aviation airfields. So um, you can see around London, I don't know if my mouse will work, here we go, we've got a large number, so we've got the Heathrow and the Gatwick and the Luton and the Stansted, um, but we've also got Manchester, we've got Edinburgh, we've got Belfast, there's a large number. Now I don't know if you recognise any of these airports, but again, we have a remote workforce, so our workforce goes out, um, working from home, travels out and about to all these sites. And the top is a really interesting airport. This is London City. I don't know if anybody recognises it. So this is on the water. So the perimeter doesn't have a boundary fence, which you normally see with a big barbed wire. This actually uses water as their um, boundary to stop people getting onto the airfield. This bottom airport, unfortunately I've never been, but it is on the wish list. This is Barra, um, so this is up in the uh, Outer Hebrides. The biggest risk here is when they land, there may be a few fish left over when the tides disappeared. Um, so this is landing on a beach. I think it's the only one in the world, um, known world, uh, known within the world um, uh, that actually has a commercial um, airport that lands on a beach. 
Top right, this is Gibraltar. So again, this is the only airfield in the world where a public road crosses straight across the runway. So another really interesting one to go out to. Here you can see security officers are stopping traffic um, as this British Airways crosses over the road. So you can actually walk straight across the runway here in Gibraltar. And the bottom right just shows two aircraft that we look at. So the bottom from this flyby is a Dash 8 aircraft. So this takes around 40 people, seating capacity for about 40 people. The Etihad above is an A380. Um, that can take up to 800 people. Most are configured for around 550 people, 550 seats because they have first class uh, on them as well. But up to 800 people can go on this. So a hugely diverse range of aircraft um, that we look at and obviously airports as well. What are we doing when we go out and about? Well, we go to what we call central search, which is a screening facility, um, and we have a look at what the operation there and see what they're getting up to. We have regulations that we need to ensure they're adhering to, and these regulations come from ICAO, which is the International Civil Aviation Organization, and that's an offshoot of the UN. So these are international regulations that all people around the world have to adhere to. So whatever airport you go to, there are some standard um, regulations that they have to adhere to. We also have EU regulation. Now, obviously, we've just come through Brexit. We have brought across that EU regulation into ours so we can maintain consistency with everybody else over in Europe. So we have that and we also have UK. We call them MSMs, more stringent measures. So you may notice at times some differences in airport security when you go through in the UK than you do if you travel to France or to Spain or, or wherever it may be. That's because different countries will have implemented additional security measures, what they feel is important uh, to them to maintain a safe and secure flight. It's really interesting actually going to these sites, that central search site, there was one I went to um, a few years ago and people occasionally bring pets, bring animals through. Um, and one time somebody brought a dog through. Uh, so with a dog, normally it comes in uh, um, a carrier in a case, um, and it gets taken into the airside area where then they actually have to search the dog. So they normally do that. They do a good visual search and they can do the handheld metal detector, the thing that they wave over the top just to make sure that the dog, there is nothing hidden on the dog, no prohibited articles. Now, unfortunately, they took it into a back room. Um, somebody left the door open and the dog shot out of the room and then decided to run up and down central search for about 10 minutes until they managed to catch it and get it back into the room, um, which a passenger thought was hilarious. But I think the security officers were getting, getting a bit upset as they ran up and down central search trying to catch it. So yeah, we see a large amount of things. We sometimes go to um, VIP screening facilities or the Royal Suite at Heathrow um, and do some observations there. That's really interesting, get to see some interesting people. I saw Matt Damon come through. I don't know if you know Matt Damon. He's a lot older and shorter than I thought he was going to be. Um, we've seen uh, prime ministers come through. Um, I haven't had the opportunity yet to be there when um, the Queen has traveled through, but I've seen um, Prince Harry, I've seen William, uh, Prince William and Kate uh, come through as well. Interestingly, Prince Harry, occasionally when he was over here in the UK, he would fly up to Scotland um, to go to Balmoral and things. Sometimes he would just wear a cap, pull down low and he'd go onto an EasyJet aircraft. So you never actually know who's on your aircraft with you. Um, so now I want to show you kind of why security is there. Now, obviously there are risks, there are threats to aviation sector um, and I'm sure some of you will be aware of 9-11 um, what happened over in America. But the main risk, the main threat here in the UK is protesters. And we've seen a large number of protesters recently um, protesting due to the expansion of airports, due to environmental issues. Now, this gentleman here was at London City. This was Black Lives Matter. He decided to climb on top of the aircraft and glue his hands to the top of the aircraft. So um, uh, it couldn't take off. <laughs> it was an interesting time. Maybe they should have just taken off and see how long he lasts, see how good the glue was. It would be a good advert for the, the super glue. But, um, the point in security is to try and identify these and pick these up and prevent um, these from happening. There are also other ones. Here we've got Extinction Rebellion at Heathrow. Um, they came along and they lay down um, uh, um, in protest for environmental issues. Here you can see passengers kind of making their way. So again, it causes disruption to people's flights. And obviously there's a very worthy cause there, um, but there needs to be that, that careful balance um, with security, um, ensuring that business can continue, um, that people can still travel and visit loved ones and travel around the world and go on holiday. So there's that careful balance that needs to be done. And protesters often 
where airports are informed when they're going to turn up and they increase their presence of security officers, but they will allow them to do their protest um, and they'll allow them to get their point of view across. So now before I go on to the future of aviation, I want to test all your knowledge of being a security operator. So I'm going to show you a few images of an egg from an X-ray. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first one, I'm not going to give you very long um, to have a look at. It should be fairly simple, and then I'll give a brief explanation around it. So let's have a look at this X-ray and see what you think. What can you spot here? What do you think this is? You can shout out in your class or try and tell your teacher. So hopefully you've all got it. It's a human. Um, this was a really interesting one. I think somebody took the um, phrase, you know, when they tell you at airports to hold on to your baggage, not to keep, not to leave your baggage unattended. Well, this person took it a bit literally. Now I have to admit this wasn't at an airport. This was at a train station in China. This lady um, put her main bag onto the x-ray um, and it went through, but she was carrying her handbag and she walked through the walk through metal detector, the same thing that beeps um, if you've got any metal on you. She was obviously told to go back, put her handbag on the belt and send it through the x-ray. So she went back, she put it on the belt and she climbed in after it, holding it. And so you can kind of see her hands down here holding onto her bag. Um, so yeah, so she went through the x-ray. I have to admit, it's not the first time that humans have gone through these x-rays. There have been occasion here in the UK where families, they'll be very rushed. They'll be looking to um, get through security quickly. Um, they're a bit stressed because everything's going on. They'll put their baby on the baby seat down. That happens rarely, but that baby seat may disappear off down the track. And actually, um, there have been a couple of occasions where x-ray operators have seen a live baby going through the x-ray as well. It's worth noting that it is very low levels of radiation. You obviously have um, x-ray screening when you go to the dentist, when you go to the doctor, to hospital. Um, it doesn't have any impact on their health. These babies all came out the other end absolutely fine. But there are occasions, um, other occasions when it came. But this is quite a good one. You can see this lady, obviously, she's got her high heels on here. Seems to be a lamp or something in her bag. I'm not quite sure what she was taking with her. Right, next one. There's a few items in the next bag that I want you to try and identify. And again, if you just want to kind of shout out or talk to yourself, see which ones you can identify um, and then we'll go through them. So here's the bag. I'll zoom in a bit for you so you can have a look. So again, I'll give you around 30 seconds or so to have a look through this and see what items can you spot? What do you think these items are? While you have a look, what I might do is just tell you that what you'll find, orange is organic material. So if anything on an x-ray comes up as orange, it means it's organic. So it's food, it's paper, it derives from a live, um, live material. Medium dense um, items are generally the kind of greens. Um, so non-organic, like plastic bottles. Um, and then blue are denser items. So often a metal or a thick plastic. So you've got kind of medium dense, um, non-organics are the green. Um, and then the blues are the really dense items. So how have you all got on? What do you think you found? So we can just run through a few of these for you. Let's see. So did anybody identify sunglasses? Hopefully they're fairly easy to spot. We had a pen up here. This, if anybody knows what this is, this is a lipstick. This is a phone possibly a Nokia or a Sony Ericsson. What the really interesting thing is um, within my job, when you go and see an x-ray operator, and I'm not an x-ray operator, um, when you go and speak to them, they're incredible. They'll be able to tell you what phone it is, who makes it, what model. They can tell you the key and what kind of car it's a key for. It, it's amazing. They're really good at their jobs. They see so many bags. Um, so we've got headphones here. This is probably a notebook, something like that. Um, we've got a perfume or, or some kind of spray. These are creams, pots of creams we've got here. Obviously somebody's ring. Um, and this is quite dark, so it's probably a metal. So my guess is probably a pot of Vaseline or something like that. You know, those little pots you have um, of Vaseline, like those little metal pots. Uh, and it's probably in a leather bag or, or some kind of fabric bag. Um, so that is what we have here. Now, that was a simplified image. Normally an x-ray operator won't get to see that. So the final image I have is an actual image from an x-ray. Um, so a bag that has come through and this contains a prohibited article. It's an article that isn't allowed. Now, there are two items in this bag that I want you to identify. One of them is an item that you're allowed to take through with you, but it needs to be removed from the bag and screened separately. And the other one is a prohibited article. You're not allowed to take it into an airport. So I'm going to bring it up. Now, normally an X-ray operator will have 30 seconds to view 
the image. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds um, before it's rejected automatically because you haven't made a decision. So let's have a look and see. Here we've got the side view. So this is a dual view X-ray, the side view of the image, and we've got the top down approach. So what can you see within this image? Um, can you see an item that needs to be removed screen separately? And can you see a prohibited article? Great, so you've now had 30 seconds. So most security operators have around 30 seconds to make a decision. If they don't make a decision, it's automatically rejected because they've got a lot of bags coming through. And uh, so occasionally it might be if your bag's rejected, it's because it's been quite busy. Uh, there's a lot of items within it and the X-ray operator hasn't been able to make a decision. What did you notice within this? Well, I think the first thing, and hopefully fairly easy, hopefully you all saw this, this looks like a laptop. So here's a laptop, an electrical item. These need to be removed from a bag and screened separately. Um, so hopefully you saw this. Now, the other item, the prohibited article, did anybody spot that? It's incredibly difficult to see. If we zoom in and look here, what do we think this is? So this is a knife. It's looking from top down. So you're looking down on the blade. You can see the point of the blade here and you can just about see the handle going around here. So there's a blade, but it's very difficult to spot. And that's because it's sat with so many other items in the bag. And if we think about these organics and things here, we've probably got clothing, um, all these items here, this orange item. We've got a power lead coming here. We've got some zips um, of the bag here. And obviously the laptop and there's a charger, the power, um, and, you know, that black box you get on the power lead uh, kind of sat over the top, but very difficult to spot. And actually sometimes you get items like this coming through the X-ray. The poor security operator has no idea what to do here. This is a very dense bag. There's a lot of items within it, and so they're going to have to reject it. So this is one of the main reasons that you get those loaders asking you to take items out of your bag. So it isn't as dense. So actually the X-ray operator can see all the way through it. So um, yeah, don't get too upset if you're on a security um, the screening post and they're asking you to take things out of your bag. This is the reason why we don't want a dense bag so they can actually identify articles within it. So other areas that we look at, well, obviously we've talked about central search, a screening post for passengers. Um, we look at vehicle searching, we look at boundaries, um, we go onto aircraft and look at security measures on aircraft. Now, I'd love to say I've traveled here. This is Emirates first class lounge, um, or, sorry, first class on their aircraft. Um, so I think it's about 7,000 pounds for a one-way flight out to the Middle East on this. So um, yeah. If you're able to afford it, then please do. I've had a walk around when it's been on the ground at Heathrow. If you go into the bathroom, their bathroom's bigger than my one back at home. Gold taps, full stand up shower. It's amazing, but um, fairly expensive. But we don't just look at airports. We don't just look at air carriers. We also go to cargo facilities. So here you can see the size of the x-ray. This is a seat here where somebody sat the screener with their dual view screens, their two screens. Look at the size. So this can have pallets that run through it. So they're doing x-ray screening at cargo facilities. Here we have IFS, in-flight supplies. So this is where they make the food that goes onto your aircraft and they can make 10, 20,000 meals every day and they're going out around Heathrow. And then these guys here, we call them FREDs and they're called free running explosive detection dogs. So you'll often see them at airports. Um, normally Border Force have them and that's probably for narcotics, um, for drugs and things they're picking up. But actually, dogs can be trained to pick up explosive scent as well. And so they're used um, in the cargo facilities to do just that. So that is something else that we regulate. So we get a chance to actually go out and see some dogs working, which is almost really interesting, really nice. So where is this leading? What's the future of aviation? Well, actually, there's a lot going on in the aviation sector. I think drone delivery is big. I'm sure you've heard about it in the news. It's going to be hugely beneficial for remote inhospitable regions to actually get um, that important goods uh, and medical supplies out to them. And possibly even if you've got your Amazon delivery, whether you can get your, your Amazon um, through that. So we're working with Amazon at the moment. Uh, space is another really big one. So Virgin Orbit are going to be based down in Newquay. Um, in Cornwall and they hope to do the first horizontal launch uh, later on or it's going to be early next year. Um, so this is horizontal launches where they're taking off in this 747 with the rocket underneath so putting satellites up. 
they get to about 35,000 feet and then release this, saves a lot of fuel because they're not shooting it up from the ground. Uh, so they go up and then drop it from under the aircraft and shoot it up. We also have another site identified right at the very top of Shetland, um, and that's going to be vertical launch as well. So we've got rockets going straight up from there, and they hope to do that in the last um, quarter of 2022. So October, November, December time. And obviously, big thing now is um, SAF, sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, so looking at how we can be sustainable. Boeing have aircraft um, that they're looking. So this is a hybrid electric. Um, that, that it's a concept that they're developing. Airbus have developed, they call them zero E's. So these are liquid hydrogen fueled uh, aircraft. So there's a lot of work and this is where we need help. Obviously, aviation is a huge polluter um, at the moment and that has been acknowledged. There's a lot of work going on. Pollution has dropped by 70% in the last 30 years from aviation. Um, but that being said, a lot more needs to be done, especially from um, the recent meetings up in Glasgow on what's been coming out of there. So this is where we need new ideas, new thoughts, new people coming in, having those, um, having that thought as to how we can develop, how we can grow. Um, here in the middle, we have a brand new X-ray um, system. So again, we need new ideas as to how we can speed up the process, how we can get people through um, X-ray screening. And this one is a bit like in hospitals, you have the CT scanners where you go in for an MRI um, and it breaks it down. You can split it up. This is a similar thing, very expensive machines, but you'll start to see these more and more at the uh, airport screening your bags. So how can you get involved? Well, Aviation is incredibly important. It's the only rapid worldwide transport network um, that we have, and it's essential for global business and for going off on holidays as well. It generates growth, economic growth. It creates a huge amount of jobs. I and mean, I think it was about 63 million jobs um, globally were in the aviation sector prior to um, prior to COVID. So we need new thoughts. We need new diverse um, people joining. I think what was interesting from my perspective is in the job I had previously, it had all been kind of police, ex-inspectors, um, border force that had been um, these security auditors. My background was actually in retail. Um, I did ski seasons for quite a while and I traveled around um, uh, Europe doing that. Um, but what is working really well now is bringing in new blood, new thoughts, new ideas. And I think that's key um, to how we move forward in the aviation sector is bringing that and coming in and having different thoughts and different ideas. Um, I think what I'd say is never think you can't do it. Um, don't think you have the skills. Never think that you don't have the skills um, that they need. Apply. You might be surprised. It is an incredibly diverse sector, as I think I've gone through. I've got a number of people on my team that have gone through the apprenticeship and that's worked really well for them. So I'd highly recommend looking at that if you are interested. Um, I think applying directly has huge benefits. What's the worst that can happen? I've put down here. Um, so have a look. I'm going to come on to a slide shortly with some links, but um, have a look at that. Interestingly, set up your own company. The UK government has set up the FAST programme, the uh, Future Aviation Security Solutions. They've set aside £25.5 million pounds to deliver over the next five years to new organisations coming up with new innovative approaches. So that's something else um, that we can look at. So it's been a very, very quick canter through um, of what I do in the aviation sector. I hope you found it interesting. If you do have any questions at all, please do um, uh, let us know. I think we can put them through the chat. Um, but on the screen now, you'll have some links and I'm sure these can be shared with your school so you can have a look if interested. But that is it. Thank you very much. That was fantastic, Adam. Thank you very much. And we do have some questions coming through in the chat and we did have um, a good few guesses coming through as well as to what was being screened and um, so and quite accurate too. So we might have some few security experts among us, which is great. Excellent. Um, so the first question we have is about technology. So how has technology kind of changed over time within security? It's a really good question. Obviously, technology is key to us developing and growing um, sector. It, what is seen as really important, security unfortunately doesn't make any money. Um, and so for airports and things, it's very important to get people through security as quickly as possible. So you can get to the airside area and you can go into the shops and have a look and get onto your aircraft. So they want to get people through um, at, at a great rate of knots. 
technology is helping do that. So there are now ideas as to the body scanners that we saw pictures of where you have to stand and put your hands up and thing kind of goes around you or you have to spin on the spot, actually getting walkthrough versions of those. So that's going to speed people um, up traveling through. I talked about the x-rays as well on the bags um, and the way that now you can break it down. So now you will find different kind of re requirements at different airports. Some people will be asking you to leave your large electricals, your laptops and things in your bag, maybe even leave your liquids in your bag as well, um, because the X-ray has the facility to actually break those down and identify those. So technology is really helping um, security. It's making it a lot more secure, a lot safer. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully more speedy in getting people, getting people through and on their holidays. Fantastic. And that actually leads us on to the next question, um, which I guess is is the way that things work now. Um, and why do things, um, electrical things like laptops need to be screened separately? So I think a lot of it is to do with they're very complex. Um, they're very easy, as we saw in the image. Um, knife sat on top. It's quite difficult to spot things because there's so many different parts to them. Um, there have been concerns in the past as to people actually using laptops and large electricals to um, disguise um, devices, knives and things that they want to take through. So breaking them down, screening them separately means it's much easier for the airport um, security operator or the x-ray operator to have a look at that item and identify um, whether it is a genuine laptop or whether they're trying to hide something within it. That makes sense. Um, and then thinking about the those security officers and the people who are actually working when we go through the airport and we put our bags on and everything, and um, we're wondering how do they work and check everything so quickly? How do they uh, everything? <laughs> it's it's a really intense job um, and they do take regular breaks. They're required to come off um, and have regular breaks. It is difficult for them. Sometimes you'll see now at um, search lanes where you go through and get screened, nobody's actually looking at the x-ray screens and you might get a bit concerned, but what they're starting to do now is have remote screeners. So that image is then put across to another room somewhere else. And so you've got a large number of people sat looking at images in a nice quiet room where they don't have the distractions. Um, and that seems to be really beneficial. That's helping a lot. So again, that's another innovation that's come about. So never get concerned if you don't see somebody at the x-ray image actually looking at the screens. They'll still be there as a backup, but I, what will be happening is that image will be getting sent to another room where there'll be people sat in a nice quiet environment and they can concentrate much more. It's very difficult when you've got passengers chatting, you've got your colleagues kind of shouting in the background to actually concentrate on the image. So um, yeah, it is a very stressful job. It's very difficult, but it's actually incredibly rewarding and it's really interesting um, uh, kind of seeing what people are taking through. Brilliant. Um, and we definitely have some interested students wondering um, what kind of subjects they should be good at or how they can become a security expert. So it's an incredibly diverse role and actually just bringing in any um, subject can be hugely beneficial. Um, it's obviously beneficial having your core, um, having your maths and your science um, and kind of understanding, uh, understanding those. Engineering, um, again, very much if you're looking after the equipment and the resources that they have, um, it's very important as well. All I would say personally is do something you enjoy, do something you follow. Your ideas will change over time. Mine changed dramatically when I first started, when I came out, I went to university. When I came out of that, I wanted to be an environmental consultant. I wanted to work for the National Trust. Now I'm working in the aviation sector, which is a huge polluter. But what I find is that now I can help shape and change and move the way that we're move, the way that we're going. Um, and so actually your ideas will change. Do something that you enjoy and you follow at the moment and you truly believe in. Um, and then who knows where that will shape and where that will end up. Brilliant. And the last question we have uh, time for at the moment is uh, what your favourite part of your job is. That's a really good question. My favourite part of my job, my favourite part of the job is going to airports and seeing everybody's smiley faces. Well, I go to arrivals and departures. The departures generally it's the smiley faces, the arrivals not so smiley. Um, but yeah, just seeing people come through and they're all really excited. They're going off on holiday and you get to see what they're bringing through, all their bags, they're getting all prepared and things. Um, and just the environment, the atmosphere, everybody's almost such a good mood, everybody's almost so nice and friendly. Um, and so I think that's 
that's the nicest thing. That and occasionally we get to go to a cargo shed and see a Bugatti Veyron or some really nice car being screened because it's being shipped off to somewhere in the world and it's going to be put on the bottom of an aircraft. So you do get to see some interesting things. Live lobsters as well. That's an interesting thing that I saw being um, shipped through a cargo shed. So yeah, you get to see some some interesting things in the role. Wow, that's really interesting. Well, um, thank you so much, Adam, for your time this morning and for sh giving us that amazing insight into your role. And I think next time any of us go through the airport, we'll have a new appreciation for what's going on around us. Uh, but thank you everyone for joining us this morning. I hope you have a really good rest of the day. And again, thank you very much, Adam. So take care, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.